Well, a particle accelerator can be broken down into a number of different sub-assemblies, uh, and the electron gun is one of those assemblies, uh, and it is arguably the most important because we can't really improve the quality of the electron beam at any point further down the accelerator. So if we start off with, uh, with bad electron bunches, then it just doesn't get any better. So I will try and uh, use these props to illustrate uh, how uh, a photo injector electron gun uh, works. This is the most important bit. This is our electron source. This is a, a device known as a photocathode. And what you're actually looking at here is a very small piece of gallium arsenide wafer which has been uh, soldered with indium onto this molybdenum substrate, or a puck as it's called. This is to cope with, with heat in case the thing gets hot to try and draw the heat away. If we can imagine a cathode assembly, which would, be, would look something like a football made out of steel, polished to a very, very high level so that it doesn't break down when a high voltage is, is applied. With this cathode mounted inside the ball and the gallium arsenide uh, active area just protruding through the ball, exposed to the, the outer world. We have a huge power supply that we then apply a massive voltage to this cathode assembly and we would typically run with 250 or 350,000 volts. What we have then is the potential to emit electrons. Now this isn't actually emitting any electrons, but it's, it's like, a, it's like a, a dam with a whole lake of electrons at high pressure behind this cathode, just waiting to get out, dying to get out. Just in front of the cathode, we have an, an anode assembly or an anode plate, which is essentially uh, a piece of steel with a hole in the middle. Again, this would normally be highly polished uh, to support high voltage. This is not a real one, no, this is not an anode at all. This is a, 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 a vacuum fitting, which I found in the vacuum lab. This would be situated just a few centimetres in front uh, of the cathode assembly, uh, but held at zero volts. So this is at Earth, zero volts. This one is at 250,000, 350,000 volts. This is our dam uh, with a, a, a lake of uh, uh, high pressure electrons behind it. Uh, so what we want to do now is, is, is do something to actually make this cathode emit some electrons. And what we do is we shine a laser onto it. So I have a laser pointer here. So the laser interacts with the, the photocathode surface uh, and that's all that is needed to, to breach the dam. And when that happens, the electrons, which are behind this dam at very high voltage, thanks to our, our huge power supply, uh, migrate across the, through the surface of the photocathode out into free space. So then what happens is the electrons follow the, electron, the, the electric field lines in between the cathode and the anode. So they're accelerated very rapidly across this gap, travel through the hole in the anode, and emerge from our electron gun and travel further downstream to the rest of the accelerator. Uh, once they've gone through the hole, my, my job as a gun physicist is done. So I guess now I need to show you where we make the photocathodes for our electron gun. So coming back to our, our photocathode, these are made for us uh, at the Institute of Semiconductor Physics in Novosibirsk in Siberia. They send them to us and we, we unpack them inside this glove box under a, a nitrogen atmosphere. Uh, and then we carry out a few chemical treatments to remove uh, any contaminants and uh, oxide layer off the surface. And then we put them into uh, what we refer to as a, a transport vessel. What happens from there is the transport vessel will be carried across and put onto the system. And this actually is the transport vessel installed on the system. I talked earlier about shining a green laser onto a piece of gallium arsenide, our photocathode, and it emitting electrons. Well, that was not quite the full truth because if I was to shine a green laser on a piece of gallium arsenide, nothing would happen. So we have to do something to try and give this system some level of quantum efficiency to make it emit some electrons when we shine this green light on it. This is what the activation process is about. We put a very thin layer of cesium down uh, and then we add an oxidant and we put another layer of cesium on and we build up this sort of uh, multi-layered sandwich effect. Uh, and while this is going on, we're constantly monitoring uh, the efficiency of this cathode by shining a green laser onto it. Uh, and as the efficiency rises above zero, we start to get some efficiency, then this cathode will start to emit some electrons and we can measure that emitted current. There is a huge amount of science and technical complication which I've not touched upon here. From my own point of view, uh, I think it's fascinating, it's very rewarding, uh, it's very different. It gives me an insight into a great many 
different scientific disciplines. There's a, a lot of cross-discipline work involved here, you know, chemistry, f physics, engineering. What, what's clear uh, in, at an accelerator facility is the interaction between the physics and the engineering. The, 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 the two are so tightly wrapped up that they at times become almost indistinguishable.